I'm Savannah from Black Witch Coven and today I'll be performing a return to sender spell. Really quite simple, kind of, but this isn't my return to sender spell. Mine is similar to this, but I actually reached out to some fellow witches and said, have you got anything that you want to share or contribute to this series? And I asked Maggie Moon what she would like to contribute. And she said, what about the return to send a spell? And I had a couple of follow-up questions from the first one she sent, she sent through because I said, a lot of people from my audience or who are watching this video may have never performed magic. So let's give them a little bit of logic and background and some additional things that they could do to help make this spell more successful. Because there's a little bit of psychology behind this type of work, which we're going to get into. So it's not horribly difficult to do the work, but thinking about it, the psychology behind it, and the fact that the return to sender spell, you have to think about probably unbinding yourself from the situation, because if someone's thrown something at you, or sent some negative energy your way, energy that you don't want, a spell that you don't want, you've got to unbind yourself from that spell and then bind that other person and then throw the spell over to them. So that's why it's a little bit tricky. So it's not completely easy. It's not as difficult as ceremonial magic or some other heavier rituals, but it can just get a little messy because of what I've just said. So I put this forward to Maggie and I said, let's do this so we're giving people lots of information so when they conduct the spell, they've got basically enough to be able to perform it. And so anyways, uh, let's get into it. Now let me just read what Maggie wrote um, about the considerations of the return to sender spell. Now, first she says, the first step is identifying the person who is working against you. And she said, seasoned witches often intuitively perceive the who the attacker is straight away. But for those who need help, they can request assistance from their higher selves or for a spirit they normally work with. However, most of you out there aren't working with spirits. And so this is when you may be able to understand who this other person is through the dream state that's probably the best way when you're dreaming ask for that person to be presented to you or through scrying she says um through intuition or other forms of divination that the person is well versed in performing she said sometimes despite these steps the enemy may not be identifiable this is fine as the spell can be worked all the same in fact, that's true. Like, if you're not sure where it's coming from, you just got to go with it anyways. But especially if you're unbinding yourself or you binding the enemy, of course, you'll need to know who that enemy is if you're about to bind them. She says the second step is where we must assume that if another magical practitioner has gone to the trouble of laying a curse upon the individual, that they likely had the foresight to bind their target before conducting the curse. Therefore, in step two, the individual will perform an unbinding on themselves. So that's, of course, if you know who the magical practitioner is, you unbind yourself from what they threw at you. The third step is where the enemy is, in turn, bound to remove any chance of power that they will try and wield over you. And a fourth step is the return to send a spell. So that's what we're going to be working through today. Right. All right, let's look at the tools that we might need. So she says a chime candle in the color, whatever feels best for you or using your zodiac um, color. So my zodiac sign is Aquarius. Some of you will say, yeah, I know you're Aquarius. You're batshit crazy girl. I'm Aquarius. And so the color for that is blue. And of course you put that in a holder so it stays stable. 
um, string or twine. She says she only uses crochet cord. I don't crochet, so I've just got black cord here. But honestly, they used to use whatever cord they have laying around, probably twine, actually. Any oil that the individual deems fit for the occasion or an uncrossing oil, I just happen to have good old uncrossing oil that I've made myself. A cauldron or a heat proof container. Yes, she says the flames get high. Um, oh, I hope not too high. I mean, the New Orleans Fire Department, these guys are really sexy, but still, I don't want them. Maybe not till later. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, some salt or earth. Yes, I've got a whole bunch of graveyard dirt in here. Or any earth, it doesn't have to be graveyard dirt. Um, an inscribing tool. So I've got lots of inscribing tools here. Then she says, cleanse the area that you'll be working in to perform the spell. You may do so with some smudge or any other method that works for you. And so she says, because that's when I asked her, well, how do you do it, Maggie? Because people want to know, know how to do it because they haven't done it before. Now to smudge the space, she's saying that you use either a smudge stick or you're using black salt in some water. Depending on the type of smudge you use, sage is really typical. This week, I was experimenting with some a eucalyptus smudge stick and look at that. I mean, seriously, it just looks like it fell off the gum tree, doesn't it? I mean, what a hot mess. I don't know who makes these, but they need a little slap. Maggie says, as I'm sprinkling the salt water or fumigating, I might say, I consecrate this space and cast out negativity from thee. All that is impeding to my work must flee. Be gone, leave, be far away from me. And then she places a smudge of water down. As I say in the horned one's name, I bring my right hand in the horn gone position to touch my left shoulder and my left horn gone hand to touch my right shoulder. With both arms crossed and fingers horned, I say, in the horned one's name, the king of the earth and ruler of the world, it is done. Hail. Wonderful. For the spell working, I usually will not cast a full circle, she says. However, I like to create a space to contain the energy raised within it to avoid dissipating so I can fully direct it all into the spell. Now, for the consecration of the circle, she uses visualization. And this is really common when we have been practicing for a long time. We use visualization more than we use our tools. But you may like to use your dagger as well. That's I'm suggesting this. Maggie didn't say it. Or your wand, depending on your craft. If you have the tools there, this could be a time that you could get some use out of them. So she says she visualizes a sphere between the world of men and the realms of the other in a time that is not a time, in a place that's not a place. And sometimes I will walk Windishins and she will chant out. She will either chant this or stand in place. And she says, I conjure thee, O circle of power, be ye cast upon this hour by the high road and the low road too. I summon thee forth and conjure you. O mighty spirits unseen, I conjure thee forth in the magic ring. Let us unite betwixt and between. And then naturally you bow your head, acknowledging the gods that are now standing before you in this cleansed space. Let's begin. I'm going to begin by throwing this eucalyptus smudge straight in the bin. So be it. So Maggie's first step is to place some of the salt or the earth into the cauldron. So mine is pretty fresh. I think it comes fresh with worms. Yep. That's pretty fresh. That's that. Next, carve the individual's name so it is unbound upon the candle. So I'm doing it for myself with a carving tool. We're going to write my name. Thank you. 
That is my name in the candle. Next, with some of the oil, just anoint the candle. Basically, unbinding, you would push it away from you, but really just dress the candle with the oil, the uncrossing oil. You're uncrossing yourself. Generally, uncrossing, you might just be wiping it away from you. That's not necessary here. Now we have a lovely dressed candle. Maggie says, then take the string, the black cord, Take the string and slide the string through your right hand a few times, instructing it that it is now a representation of the binding that has been placed upon thee. And then wrap the string around the candle as best as you can. She says, tie the string in a place at the top of the candle. You want to be close to the wick so that will light at the onset of the candle burning component of the spell. It doesn't have to be perfect as this is highly symbolic in nature. So basically this string represents the binding that has been placed upon me. And so I'm thinking about that as I'm pulling it through my right hand. Do this as many times as you want just to really connect with the idea that someone has put this binding on you and this string is a representation of that binding that's been done to you. And then she says, you are wrapping this string around this candle. So at the end of the string, it, um, it's at the top of the candle. And so then you're just wrapping this around the candle until you get to the top. End up as close to the top of the wick. Put it in the holder. She says, then you put this in the cauldron itself, and that is sitting on the earth in that cauldron. So there it is. It's going to sit just there. So the earth is going to absorb any negativity that has come due to the binding. And the fire shall burn away the fetters that have been cast upon thee. Now this is where you're going to spend some time really connecting with this. Um, connect to the individual that has bound you. Connect to the binding itself. If you don't know who the person is, think of them in general terms, such as whoever is sending negativity my way, whoever is responsible for binding me. Uh, put it in that type of general terms if you, if you need to. Placing it in the bowl. Continuing on with the visualization, what you do now is imagine or visualize or see a root growing out of your tailbone and connecting to the earth. This is releasing any negativity if you need to do it at this time. Then draw up from the earth the fire serpent energy from your root chakra. So maybe you spend some time in meditation really connecting or breathing deep into that root chakra and help push up that fire energy. Begin to quicken your breath and consciously raise a cone of power with your willed breath that is filled with your intention. Continue focusing on the intention of burning away any fetters or bindings that have been cast upon thee. Know with all of your being that nothing can constrain you. Now direct this energy into the cone of power that you are building. With the vision of your intention firmly in your mind, when the cone reaches its apex, you shall then light the candle.
Now you're staring into the flames. Become one with the flame. Now these flames are burning away any of the chains that are being placed upon yourself. With each breath, you continue to feed the flame that is within you and around you. And upon the candle, burning away is anything that is binding or unblocking you. Now the chant that Maggie suggests is fetters fall and burn away, unbound my spirit shall forever stay. And she says that you can say that over and over again if you like while this is burning. But I've used a large taper candle. This is going to take some time. Maggie suggests use a chime candle. It's really up to you. And so now the candle looks something like this in my little cauldron. There's not a lot left here. And Maggie suggests when it gets down to about this side, she says, I call to thee, O element of earth, to neutralize that which I now toil and send it out to root and soil. And she says, then set any remains aside and dispose of them properly later. The next step to find your enemy, you could use a puppet or you could use a photo of the target or Maggie says that you could write their name or identifying information upon a piece of paper. Now I suppose if you don't know, if this is a general representation of all the people that could potentially be harming you, then you can just visualize all of the people that could be sending negativity your way or harm your way and then Wrap the cord around the doll. You could do so anti-clockwise. And so you say, I blind thee, I wind thee, and I bind thee forever and ever around. Alone and powerless, forever you are bound. So you can chant this over and over again as you wrap and tie the cord around the little poppet or image or whatever you're doing. Now I've done a really quick job of this, but you get the idea. So let's talk about those words a little bit. I blind thee is said so the target cannot physically see it is you performing the spell. When we say alone and powerless forever you are bound, this is said so no one will aid them working against you. And so when you're getting rid of this, there's a couple of different ways. Maggie says buried at a crossroads, cemetery or off your property. Yes, you could do that, absolutely. Or you could stick it in a jar, a container, and fill it up with urine or war water or something like that to be a little bit more dramatic. But basically, just get rid of it. Make sure that it's nowhere on your property um, after you complete the spell. That's probably the most important thing. Now we get to do the return to sender spell. So what's involved with that? Well, let's look at the tools. We need a black taper candle, an oil that is deemed appropriate, such as a crossing oil, for this situation my strongest crossing oil is the doom oil that we make but I also have here I'm considering using um, the Lyle oil also a plate which I have herbs that are deemed appropriate uh, or wormwood so she has wormwood rue balmoni stinging nettle I actually have I'm going to use um, wormwood because I think that's a great uh, herb to use. But also I have my own blend. You need a mirror, which I have, a knife, scissors, a tadlock, which is a link to the target. This is the assumption you know the target. 
an offering to the spirits, a libation, a fragrant smoke or food. For this, I'm going to have some wine. Yeehaw! Now, Maggie says, if none of them are obtainable, then one can use anything that links the spellcaster to the target, even if it is just a description, such as lady with the red hair that is always rude to me at lunch. That's pretty cool. The link is a means of connecting one's focus upon the target. The actual physical link is less important than the desire to connect and knowing it will work. Full investment of belief is the key to success, for sure. Now Maggie offers some good advice here. She says, if it will be of further assistance to the new practitioner to feel more at ease, they might want to say something like, Horned one, you know who they are. Aid me in returning these curses back on them. So that's a nice thing to say. Now for this, we inscribe the name of the target or the person that you're working against into the candle once again. And so as I don't have anyone specifically, I will do something really general working with the concept that the horned one knows the people that are against me. I'll just put all who wish me harm. Me harm. Bad thoughts, bad ideas bad intent. So be it. Okay. Done. Anoint the candle and infuse it with your intention. Now, where's my little candle holder? Here's one. I don't use my particular doom oil with my hands at all. It has all the ingredients that you may see on the forensic files. <laughs> so yeah, you don't want to be using that with your fingers. So generally I will use gloves or I have a dropper. And she says, anoint the candle and infuse it with your intention. So I normally just drop some oil down that candle. And let it dribble all the way down there. Or if you really need to use your hands when you're using my doom oil, put on some gloves and then work with your hands. That's my tip. Place the herbs over the plate, hold your hands over the herbs and infuse them with your intention. So let's do that. Now I love wormwood because it's a very popular ingredient I use when making packs, you know, especially like mixing it with sandalwood and when calling to um, spirits. So this is probably the most recommended herb that I would use in this scenario. Maggie says, take your hands over the herbs, infuse them with your intention. You know, the intention is to return this energy to the sender. We turn the candle counterclockwise in the herbs to build momentum while reversing back the ill intent in the send to the sender. So I wasn't doing that. So let's do that now. I'm going to reverse the candle in the herbs to visualize returning all of this ill intent to the sender. Now Maggie has a lovely little incantation she suggests, and I'll put this in the blog post as well. Burner be burned, turner be turned, attacker is prey. I return the ill will where it shall stay. Amplified in power and strength, forever bound to thee, is that which you have sent to me. That's quite nice. Burn and be burned. Now this is the fun part. 
You do this aggressively. You cut the wick off the top of the candle, flip it around, and then you're going to cut a new wick in the bottom of the candle. Here you will take a few moments once again to really focus on your intention, focus on the person that you're sending this curse back to. And with this in mind, focus on the breath and with your breath, build up the intention, furthering your resolve in the task. Then say, black, 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 turn ill will back. 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 Turn ill will back. Turn ill will back. When you're ready, light the candle. You may continue this chant after you have lit the candle. It feels really good saying this chant actually. Black, 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 turn ill will back. Black, 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 turn ill will back. And think about that going back to whoever's sending you ill will your way. Really seeing it going into their faces. Now you should sit here and continue chanting this for as long as you feel necessary. Now we do have another taper candle, which could take in these conditions with air conditioning on, it could take an hour to burn, even this amount, it's burning very slowly. So just be mindful of that when you're lighting your candles. So maybe even a chime candle might work quite well for this situation as well, unless you know, if it's a really powerful situation, if someone you know has sent something really negative to you, I would recommend you spend that time uh, working through pushing all of that negativity back to that person for as long as possible, even if it takes you an hour. Even in some of our rituals where we're performing Luciferian magic or darker arts magic, we will sit for maybe half an hour each time, really pushing the intention into what we need to do via the flame or if it's just uh, telepathic. That's really the key to the dark arts. Now, a nice little closing ritual for this might be to offer a drink and thanks to the spirits at the end of the ritual. So I like red wine. I poured myself some red wine. I pour the spirits and red wine. I happen to have an altar set up at the back here anyways. So I will be offering this to my altar over here and I'll be raising my glass as I also offer this to the spirits. Cause that's the idea of offering to having a drink of thanks and gratitude together. Sometimes, not all the times, that's what I'm doing now. But Maggie says to say, I give thanks to thee, O spirits that have gathered around May there be kinship and peace between us, now and forever. Please accept this offering of thanks and appreciation. So it is done.
She says, place the offerings outside, preferably by a tree, and dispose of any remaining spell items off of your property, preferably upon the land of the enemy. Now, after you've done that, a nice way to really finish this off, even if this candle is still burning, really, is to cleanse down your area. Yes, you can put your little candle back, but cleanse down all the area, remove all of the tools and things that shouldn't be around, and then go and have a bath yourself, a spiritual bath. Now, it might be as simple as a salt scrub if you don't have anything around you, or maybe you have some hyssop. Hyssop is um, a very popular spiritual bath oil. But this is really just to remove any negativity that could be stuck to you. You've done all this great work to unbind yourself and uh, throw some shade somebody else's way. So a cleansing isn't a bad idea. Maggie also says have a cleansing bath with sea salt and hyssop and perform auric cleansing and strengthening visualizations. So I really feel good after doing that spell actually, even though it's on video with you guys and I'm not really focused properly when I'm sharing something via a video, I really feel quite good. Like something has been shifted by doing this spell. So I hope you get some benefit out of it as well. I love to hear your comments and feedback. I know so many of you out there are spellcasters yourself. So if you have your tips, please give us your tips. I love tips. Could be different. Um, whatever you do, it's really nice that we build a community and all share some stuff where we can. Most of the time, if you want to share something where I respond, it's better to put it over onto the Black Witch Coven blog post for this video there'll be a link for that under this video and under on that blog post I'll have Maggie's incantations and everything she shared with us for this particular video that'll make it easy for you to follow along because there was a lot right and also Maggie's uh she wrote or co-authored a book. I think I'm allowed to say that now I think it's just been released or it was released a week or two ago and so there's a link to that under this video and also some more information about that on the blog page. But otherwise, thanks for hanging out. It's been a minute. I need a rest. I think I need to go and have a spiritual bath right now. I'm needing to detox all of this energy from me and then have a lovely glass of wine and then not think about it. <laughs> all right. But thanks for watching. And as always, may your spell casting be auspicious. Bye for this week.